Welcome fellow wine lovers, this is the Wine Ghost Podcast. I'm Mate Vash, certified sommelier and seeker of hidden stories behind the most mysterious drink in history. If you have any questions about the topics we mentioned during the shows, please look for the Wine Ghosts on Instagram, where you can send your questions and responses via direct messages or just leave a comment under the episode's post. You can also find easy ways to get in contact with our guests and follow their stories. But now, please grab a glass, get comfortable and listen how today's ghosts get out of the bottle. First of all, I want to wish you a very happy new year and a lot of beautiful wines to enjoy in 2020. And I would also like to use this year's first episode to say thank you to all my listeners and guests to make my life happier with your support. This podcast means a lot to me personally and motivates me to improve professionally day by day. Therefore, I'm going to do everything I can to always make the Wine Ghost content more interesting, educational and professional. I have some ambitious plans for 2020, as well as for this decade, and I'm honored to share these stories and visions with a growing wine loving audience. Thank you all again and cheers. In this episode, you will hear a conversation with Tomás Kis, who is the man behind the Shomloi Vander wines from the Shomlo Hill, Hungary. This unique volcanic hill has been producing very distinctive whites for centuries now and gives home to the legendary wedding night wine, which was also recommended by monks as a medicine in the Middle Ages. Tomás is a small organic producer with powerful wines. His greatest mission in winemaking is to transmit the terroir of Shomlo which he introduces in great detail in this episode, along with letting us taste three wonderful wines of his cellar. I highly recommend this episode if you want to be taken to a place where honest winemakers, basalt rocks, an ancient castle ruin, and Eufark, the key grape of the region, sets the mood for an authentic and historic volcanic terroir. So, we are sitting here in, uh, in a beautiful old uh, and very cozy cellar <laughs> with Tomás and uh, with his three beautiful wines which we're gonna taste also during the conversation and thank you for the invitation and thank you for the welcoming welcome to the show Tomás how are you today <laughs> <laughs> fine thanks uh, yesterday we had uh, quite a big tasting with our uh, colleagues we we just uh, spoke about the new vintage what we had Mm-hmm. 2019 and it seems week after week more beautiful so i think that the vintage is one of my best since i been produce wine here in shomlo wow, so good news it's very interesting <laughs> good to hear and for all um grape varieties or the yeah have... it's a it's a typical excellent vintage not mm-hmm. just for uh, all Slizing or for the Ufark. Mm-hmm. We, we had uh, everything like in my mind, in, in my uh, dream. What, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we started the harvest not in summer because mm-hmm. 17, 18, 15, we had uh, extremely hot and uh, dry vintages. So mm-hmm. we had to start early, but now we, we had normal autumn oh, vintage. <laughs> Beautiful. And um, maybe if you could a little bit introduce the, the terroir and where, where your plantings are and what, what we should know about So your... we are here now uh, at Shomlo Hill. It's, uh, it's the second smallest region, wine region in Hungary. It means we have 540,000 that you have to check it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this wine region uh, includes three different hills, Shomlo, Kishomio and uh, Sharkhead. From uh, this 540, Shomlo it's around 400. And I have vineyards only here in the Shomlo. Uh, Shomlo it's a so-called witness mountain. The origin is from 8-9 million years ago, mm-hmm. where we had the Pannonian Sea. And this volcano was active under the sea level. 
So the volcano covers under the sea the clay, the sand, the chalk, what was under the sea level. That's why we have so unique uh, terroir because some of the wine regions have clay or sand or limestone or basalt, but we have everything at the same time. So it gives for us a very interesting wines, very unique. So I have. I work on 5.5 uh, hectares at the moment in 11 different parcels all around the hill, east, west, south and on the northern side. Mm -hmm. And I work with the main uh, varieties, Olas Riesling, Eufark, Furmint, Hashla, Lue. And I have some uh, specialty called Kobar, it's a uh, Hungarian grape mm -hmm. too. And these are all white varieties, right? Also, yeah. And every um, winemaker on the mountain uh, cultivates only white varieties, right? Yeah, it's a 99% mm -hmm. white wine region. Mm -hmm. Only the Kreinbacher estate, they have uh, almost two hectares of Syrah. Okay. And that's it. And some small producers have Merlot, some Pinot Noir, but I think it's a region for whites. Not, not for the reds. And why do you think it is, or how would you explain it? Good question. Uh, if we could taste now 10 strong different white wine region mm -hmm. separately, mm -hmm. you always uh, recognize the Chamblou. It's very special. Mm -hmm. But if we taste 10 different uh, red wine region and one is from Chamblou, you never figure out it's from Shomlo. It's a good red wine, mm -hmm. good Syrah, but but uh, don't have the special flavors of of the Shomlo. Mm -hmm. I think Shomlo could be expressive in the whites, not in the reds. Okay. For example, you can recognize Eger has a very special taste, Villain has a very special taste, but I don't think Shomlo has in in reds. Mm -hmm. So maybe these varieties transmit the, the terroir the best. Yeah. Or would you say? And I'm also sure. the mineral. Uh, yeah. So I know so maybe because you have a like when we drove here, we saw also the vineyards were kind of built up uh, from basalt or basalt stones, and also a lot of houses actually were built yeah. from this basalt. That this is the the first level of soil that you see, right? This uh, very uh, almost black or very dark gray basalt. Do, could you maybe tell us a little bit what yeah, so if, does it give? If you check the vineyards, uh, you can find always sand, clay and basalt, but depend on the, the parcel, it's mm -hmm. on the top or middle or more bottom of the hill, mm -hmm. you can find more or less basalt. I have some parcel which is 100% uh, small basalt, mm -hmm. but we can find vineyards which full with uh, sand. Mm -hmm. So, but but this basalt can solve in the water in the rain. Okay. So if you have more sandy or more clayly soils, you can feel the basalt too, because it's it's in it's mm -hmm. from from the top of the hill. Mm -hmm can solve with, with the rain. And how would you maybe distinguish the grape varieties in terms of soil preferences? So you have a very special variety, which is uh, Eufark. Maybe we're going to talk about it later, but uh, would you say that uh, certain varieties uh, transmit the soil, the basalt soil better than, the, than other ones? Maybe we talked about Eufark or Harsh Value and Olas Riesling, yeah. what, okay. what suits the region? So, so we have extremely strong uh, character of the vineyards. Mm -hmm. So you can feel in all different white varieties uh, this Chomblo character. But maybe the Eufark can show better because it, it don't have any own character. Mm -hmm. But do you understand? Because Hashtagalu mm -hmm. has uh, some flowery, mm -hmm. honey flavor. Full mint has a very citrus, typical mm -hmm. character. Olas Riesling had uh, this very special taste. 
But UFARC, if, if I uh, have to <laughs> describe what's the UFARC taste, it, mm -hmm. I can't because it's neutral. Yeah, neutral. Uh -huh. So maybe Shomlu and UFARC. The, the perfect match. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. if, if we want to show the, the deep taste of the vineyards. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that you have parcels almost all around the hill, right? Yeah. Which is kind of special if you look at St. George Hill or Badachun, uh, most of the plantings or maybe many or maybe all of them are on the southern side, right? But here you have also the eastern and western. Uh, I think in, in St. George Head they have uh, vineyards all around mm -hmm. too. Yeah, well, it's uh, traditionally you can find vineyards around the hill and maybe it's more important than the the type of the soil. So we have everywhere almost the same, more sandy, more clay, more or less clay, but uh, the four important character of Shomlo is the four side of the hill. Mm -hmm. So you can feel the difference between the, the west, the east, the north and the southern side. Mm -hmm. But but you never can taste the difference on the south side to mm -hmm. different parts. Mm -hmm. And it traditionally all the the wine growers said it's a Dobo side, it's Shomlo Sölös side, it's a Borsörcsök or Vásárhely mm -hmm. because that was uh, traditionally the, the four different wine. Mm -hmm the foresight and and I followed that idea so so it happened uh, so I have a lot of different vineyards in all the different sides but if I could start again I would do the same mm -hmm. to, to plan or buy vineyards all the foresight because for example the this wine what we have tasted this hash level is a blend of south and the uh, the northern side. Okay. So we, we can play with the soils because we have the same all around the hill, but if we want to make more sophisticated flavors, we can blend or we have to blend the different side because this south side gives structure, strong flavors, and the northern side gives very interesting aromatic and uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. And how would you maybe distinguish this harsh level from a? I know Toka is a big region, but uh, if you would have the chance, how would you maybe distinguish your harsh level from a typical Tokai one? I think it's more mineral, mm -hmm. more uh, straightforward. Mm -hmm. Tokai in Tokai they have more bodied a little bit higher alcohol, more round. Mm -hmm. In Shomlu we have um, more more this acidic style mm -hmm. and it means in the taste because if we check the analytic the usually we have low low acids but in the taste no. Mm -hmm. oh, what does it mean low acid? How many grams you would uh, depend on. For example, this hash level will have uh, 6.2. Uh -huh. But euphoric, it's, uh, it's typical to, it can lose easily the acids. So sometimes we have under 5, all us pleasing under 5 sometimes in the hot vintages. Ah, so maybe let's taste the hash level. <laughs> Thank you, Agi Shade. <laughs> so. I started to work in Shomlo in 2010. 10 was my first vintage, but uh, between 10 and 14, I just produced here wine like a hobby. I graduated like a winemaker, and mm -hmm. I worked in Eger, Eger wine region. And in uh, 14, I moved here. And since 14, we grew a little bit from. So I started with a half hectare. Okay. And then now we work on 5.5. And can I maybe ask, after graduating from Agar, why did you choose this mountain or how did the idea came, come from? Because uh, I loved very much the Shomlo wines. So 
during the my tasting mm -hmm. because I have, I have a, a lot of good friends. Usually we taste a lot of wines. And Shomlo was my favorite white wine region. And, and I, I always want to to try and produce wine here. Mm -hmm. And it happened. So <laughs> when I was here first, I felt in love with, with the hill. And, mm -hmm. and we started. <laughs> <laughs> and was it a rough start or how was how could we imagine the first steps when you, okay, I love this wine, I love to produce wine, I love this hill, okay, what's the next kind of step, alone maybe or not alone? To to get cellar, to get winyards, to get barrels, mm -hmm. machines, everything. So I did it step by step. So when I produced my first wine, for fortune, I sold it. So next year I can I could produce a little bit bigger quantity, and it's year after year we we increase a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the moment I want to stop. So it's uh, around 12, 15,000 bottles per year, mm -hmm. and it's enough. Mm -hmm. And also, how big maybe the the capacity of of your working hours, or work, do you work alone, or do you have? Do no. you get any? Around a half hectare, or maximum one, what you can work alone. Mm -hmm. But on five hectares, I have uh, four very nice ladies. They they do the the green works, and I have one guy who helps me a lot uh, cutting the grass. You know, man works a lot of man works because from the eleven parcel we can uh, cultivate only six by tractor. Mm -hmm. Five we have to do everything hand by hand. Mm -hmm. And I have one guy who who made the the machine works. Mm -hmm. And also, as I seen the news, you just got uh, to be a certified uh, organic yes, yeah. winemaker, right? So, okay. I work organic since 14, mm -hmm. but uh, it wasn't so important to get the certification in 2014. But uh, nowadays, when you know uh, a lot of producers and a lot of customers like this natural mm -hmm. or organic idea, uh, you have to be strict. So. Because I know a lot of producers just say I'm organic and it's not enough. So if you work organic, you have to certify mm -hmm. your vineyard mm -hmm. and your wine mm -hmm. because that's the... That's how you prove. Yeah. 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 And if you don't know the winery, that's the... If you were mentioning the natural wine movement, maybe, or natural wines, uh, what, do you work maybe with any orange wines or do you know... I uh, produced in 15 vintage orange wine and it was nice, delicious with a very low sulfur. But my problem is with the orange, for example, here in Shomlo. This, this method gives you very typical, very orange flavor. So, so if you produce orange wine, you never will uh, recognize it where this wine came from because you can produce orange everywhere in the world and mm -hmm. it will be the, almost the same so we have a strong unique flavor so we have to show that flavor not the taste of the the skin maceration mm -hmm. so not the wine making method but the terroir yeah. so. mm -hmm. i like the orange wine i produced once but uh, i will never do it again mm -hmm. because you can do everywhere. Yeah. So. You have this very typical terroir, so why not show it, right? Yeah. yeah. But now, as I, as this harsh level is warming up, it's uh, it gets its rubber flavors, almost this apricoty and very, very delicate. But it's very, yeah. It, I feel the acidity, but it's also very, like it's very rounded. It, it has yeah. a full mouthfeel. It was uh, extremely ripe. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in the south side mm -hmm. and so that's that's the way you, so if we have a structure from the south side and we could uh, blend a little bit acid or aromatic mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the or of the cooler side that's the result it's beautiful it's a very well balanced wine and it's it's your kind of base or uh, entry level uh, wine or do you how would you distinguish your lines maybe my first idea was to produce just a few different wines because it's a small wine region small winery we don't have to produce 12 different kind of wine we have to focus on Chomro. So I don't have a entry level or a premium and top. My goal is to produce every year the same quality under the name Chomro Evandor. Mm -hmm. But in the last few vintage, it means 17, 18 and 19, I decide to, to battle some single vineyard or barrel selection because uh, because they were over uh, in quality mm -hmm. in terms of quality mm -hmm. uh, than the the average mm -hmm. so for example i will show you now the so-called estate eufark mm -hmm. which is a which is the most important wine which has to be the same quality every year but in 17 and 18, I had few barrels which were more interesting, so I, I decided to show them separately. Okay, beautiful. So these are barrels selected, not vineyard selected? It's so a vineyard selected. Okay. And as I look at this label, could you maybe, if it's, because it's a very typical label, could you maybe explain this logo? You know the name Shomlo Evander, it means uh, wanderer or wayfarer of mm -hmm. Shomlo. And uh, our designer uh, tried to, to give the label something very typical, mm -hmm. which, which tells the story a little bit. Because this grape balloon um, says it's a, it's a traveling, yeah. traveling so you are under it like a yeah <laughs> beautiful it's 2018 right 18 we just released this wine because uh, 17 is sold out so it's a blend of five different parcel all the different parcel we harvest always separately ferment separately age them separately but uh, in the end, we put them together. Mm -hmm. And do you use uh, native yeast? So spon yes. and spontaneous, spontaneous fermentation. Mm -hmm. And what are the reasons behind it? Can you maybe because on that? 2010 was my first vintage here in mm -hmm. Chomro, and it was very nice. So I think a lot of wine growers uh, try to use yeast because uh, they are not happy with the, the native yeast, but I was very happy. <laughs> so, so I don't want to change it because it was good. So why why should I change or or try an, another mm -hmm. uh, yeast? Sometimes, if we have stuck fermentation, I uh, I add some yeast because I don't want to produce semi sweet mm -hmm. wines. But um, ninety nine percent it goes spontaneous. So Eufark is, uh, I think, the most important variety for Chomro because this variety is only 120 hectares in the whole country and 100 is from here, from Chomro. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely unique. An excellent volcano, beautiful terroir, a grape variety which is under 200 hectares and it's very extremely gives you the terroir so we have to work with this it's our heritage mm -hmm. it's our uh, most important uh, flagship so to say right yeah yeah well it has a very different bouquet but it it's uh, it, we are we have here uh, different 
um, vinification. Mm -hmm. I think for mint hash level and dollar tracing, we don't have to use too much oak, maybe nothing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the U fork need need the oak. And why is that? I think because of the the structure of the acids U fork. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very sharp, very not so friendly. Okay. So, so if we can use a good quality oak a little bit just a hint it, it will be much more complex mm -hmm. hash level with four mint and all that they have beautiful acids we we don't have to cover or soften it just just show them but you for need a, a little bit mm -hmm. crazy or and do you use malolactic with you for then always or it's so usually or if it, it happens, happens. Uh, Okay. During the first fermentation, mm -hmm. usually on on the volcanic regions, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult biology and biochemistry, but it's something because of the high kalium uh, mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. High potassium. Have you experimented uh, with barrel fermentation before with any of the varieties? Hash level with full mint, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, since so 11, 12, 13, 15, vintage, 14, 16, I did uh, almost everything in, in oak. Mm -hmm. But 17, 18, and 19, I reduced the using of the oak mm -hmm. for, uh, for that varieties. Right, the barrel for me. And do you use only oak or um, oak barrels? Um, yeah. Because I, I, yeah. Hungarian and French. Oak. Uh -huh. And uh, bigger ones, 500 liter. Oh, okay. And the small ones. Because I know that some some producers began, or I don't know if before, also with Akatsian uh, barrels yeah, yeah. as well, which gives a very. Here in Chomlo, Kolonich has a very beautiful Akatsian. Mm -hmm. Uh, barrels, but I never tried. I'm satisfied with the, the oak. <laughs> I think we don't have to do any special <laughs> winemaking techniques or a, or a twist <laughs> to, to our uh, procedure because we have our hands something very unique. Mm -hmm. So our goal and our uh, job is to show this as clean as we can and as simple as we can. I don't think it's a good way to to harvest too early, add yeast, ferment them in low temperature because it, it gives a different mm -hmm. taste. And at the same time, I don't believe in overaging overripe grape and aging one and a half, two or three years in, you know, because it's changed a lot again. So I want to work in the middle. Just mm -hmm. just uh, just to to show, just to to make themselves. And the balance found the maybe the perfect balance with the highest yeah. and the dry everything. I just sipped on this U Park uh, forty seconds ago. And it's just maybe the six layers of flavor that, <laughs> that came to my mouth. It's like when you drink it, it's like someone put like a like a flavor bomb in, in, in your mouth. And also you, you feel the saltiness, but it's not when you when it grabs your mouth and pulls it out, maybe. <laughs> not this kind of acidity, but it's very maybe thanks to the oak usage, it's very rounded already, even though it's 2018. I very think... complex wine. So since I've produced wine organic way, they are year after year more complex. Mm -hmm. You can feel much more flavor uh, if you if you work organic in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And how would you do distinguish it? Or how would you explain it? Why? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the most important is you have much more richer uh, life 
in the soil. Mm. And, and at the end of the day, that's the most important because the, the roots of the wines, wine stocks or the grapes, communicate with the uh, mycorrhiza or the mm -hmm. fungi or the, mm -hmm. the microbiological things. Mm -hmm. And if you have a lot, they can uh, earn much more flavors and much more uh, minerals from mm -hmm. the soil. And that's the most important uh, way of the organic growing to, to make the soil living. Mm -hmm. And also maybe the roots go go deeper, right? If you, they have to suffer a little bit if you don't use any. Fertilizer. Yeah, if you work with uh, cover crap, it it helps to to go the, much yeah. deeper in the, mm -hmm. the roots. And how, in in terms of flavors or aromas, how would you uh, maybe characterize your Ufark or a Ufark? <laughs> Usually, I, I say it's uh, like a vegetable soup. <laughs> the the euphor yeah that's a fun description yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's uh, not floral it's not uh, uh, passion fruit it's not uh, mm. not any any typical white wine fragrance it it has vegetable cellar mm -hmm. celery can you maybe leverage on this legend what you have about you or about Chamblo wines which is the wedding night, the legend of wedding night, or is it, was it originally a Park or was it a cuvee probably, right? It was a cuvee, mm -hmm. Chomlo wine, mm -hmm. and, and traditionally the Chomlo wines were blended mm -hmm. like Gemischte mm -hmm. style wines. And uh, yeah, it's a legend, I don't believe in legends, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if the legend says if you drink Euphoric or Shomlu wine uh, during your wedding night, mm -hmm. you will have a boy. But uh, all the producer in Shomlu, what I know, they have 99% girls. <laughs> 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 wow, that just <laughs> ruined the legend. <laughs> but, <laughs> will you try it yourself? <laughs> our, our first uh, born is girl too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we just broke this. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, and oh, you already mentioned kabar, which is a which is a native variety, right? In Hungary. Yeah, How? it's a Hungarian crossing. The origin is from uh, the Tartal Wine and uh, Wine Research Institute. Uh, you know, in the socialism, Tokayasu was our biggest export product in a big quantity, bad quality, but, but uh, in the Tarsal Institute, they, they wanted to select grapes which are uh, easier, which can produce easier botrytized grapes. Mm -hmm. So Zeta is, is a Furmin Bouvier. Kabar is hash level de Bouvier. Okay. <laughs> it's a, it's crossing. They they make it for to get easier the botrytized. Mm -hmm. And here in Shomro you can find only 0 0.2 hectare. That's the only one we need, what I cultivate. And the idea was for the owner to produce here sweet wines, also wines. Mm -hmm. And that's why he planted a kabar, kabar, sole, food, mint, hash, and new park. But uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, I, I just harvested for, uh, for uh, dry wines this year. But uh, I think it happens to, to make a beautiful Chomlou sweet wine, some Rodney technology. Wow, with botrytis. Yeah, with a lot of botrytis and uh, overripe grapes. Wow, beautiful. And how? Because it's a very different terroir. You don't have the bodrog under your under Yeah, your good question. But we have an um, extremely big difference in uh, temperature between the day and night during mm -hmm. the autumn. So in the end of the autumn, usually we have a extremely high humid and fog around mm -hmm. the hill. Mm -hmm. That's why the, the botrytides can, can work. Mm. 
And on on which side do you have this? All, all? Uh, the the copper I have on the south side. Okay. Uh, in the middle of the. Yeah. Uh -huh. So maybe the sun cuts down the fog or cuts through the fog, right? Yeah. And it has enough brightness. Yeah. And could you maybe tell us a little bit about the fine pairings? What would you pair if you could, or would you um, with this typical volcanic wines? My idea is you have to be very open-minded <laughs> to to make wine pairings but typical Chumlo and Chumlo wine and, and food pairing is the the all the fruits which has some smoked cheese meat everything what has a little bit of smoke because they they build up incredible the flavors mm -hmm. and uh, all the cheese, goat cheese is, I think, the, the best pairing. Mm -hmm. Lamb, lamb with uh, some um, some hardly green uh, spices. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of uh, rosemary. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. And of course, fish, fish dishes. But I don't want to say typical fish. Usually, mm -hmm. usually for all the fish, it's it's good. Yeah, it makes sense because it it's on itself. It's a very complex and rich wine, so it doesn't need a lot of spices and hundreds of ingredients, probably, right? But, and but you, you have to try the some smoked food uh, mm -hmm. because that's my uh, my my favorite pairing. Because now you just put the tarasok. It means uh, balcons yeah. or uh, the terraces. <laughs> yeah. So this is a Ufark too, the same vintage like the previous one, eighteen. But uh, in eighteen, we harvest together six different parcels, and two of them was uh, much higher mm -hmm. quality. I don't know why. Maybe because of the very low yields. Because this terrace is a. Uh, is the traditional head train system mm -hmm. vineyard. It means we have only four or five bunches on, on a wine stock, so it's extremely uh, concentrated. concentrated. Mm -hmm. But it means it's only 600 bottle. So from the the estate you work, we we bottle three four thousand per mm -hmm. year. But the the single vineyards only one barrel. So in, in 18, we bottled the Estate, the Terrasoc, and I have one more Borsverchuk. Mm -hmm. Borsverchuk is one single parcel? Yes, right. from the east side of the hill. Okay, and why is it so special? Maybe the east side is the coolest side. It has much different taste of, in terms of acids. And uh, because of the, the cool uh, part, you you can let the grapes out so it it will never overripe mm -hmm. but but get the the ripe flavors mm -hmm. without increasing too high alcohol or, or losing the, the acids but it now you mentioned smokiness maybe i imagine in my head but it, it's almost like a sauvignon like a like a chef shannon or like a poly i i really get this smokiness but under this it's a very Right. Yeah, it has a almost honey-like or honeysuckle. Yeah, but it's much darker or a, a tone darker than the a little bit the previous one. How how many months did it spend in milk? Ten. Mm -hmm. Usually, uh, for the Ufark we we use between seven and and ten ten months aging. Mm -hmm. mm. It's more round for sure, yeah, but it's wow, it's almost heavy on the palate. Even for a white wine, I maybe would I uh, recognize it as a red wine in terms of phenolics. <laughs> and uh, wow. it's so during the year, all the, the vineyards, all the UFR grapes get the, the same, same process. So I don't produce Euphoric vineyard for uh, the estate wine and for mm. the for the single vineyard wine. 
it just happens. So if I battle a single vineyard, it's because the vintage and uh, the vineyard was much more interesting on that tier, not because I wanted to make a mm -hmm. higher quality. Mm -hmm. Because all the grapes get the same in the four year. Mm -hmm. And the UFARC has a very good aging potential, right? Not just the UFARC, we can say Shomlo mm -hmm. has a great, extremely great aging potential. It means uh, over 10 easily. Mm -hmm. I think they they will start the best form at the age two three years, and they they just increase the mm -hmm. the complexity. Do you have maybe some extremely uh, or older vintages? What you you for yourself? At home, I have a few bottles of my first vintages, 10, 11, 12, mm -hmm. and they are uh, they are extremely good. Uh, so when, when we came here on the road, we just uh, crossed some very small villages, but never... Or then we saw these huge mountains, kind of in the middle of nowhere. How can maybe a tourist, or a, what would you recommend a, a tourist to spend his or her time with here around the mountain? And what can they... Why should they come here, maybe? So Shonwe is a very speci speci special uh, touristic... Uh, attraction because you can find here nothing <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> only only wines and, and wineries <laughs> so so that's the truth uh, we have a we have a honest marketing <laughs> quite a lot of visitors but they are strictly the wine tourists mm -hmm. we have some thermal baths around here but we don't have water, we, we don't have a big, beautiful city. We have two restaurants, a few accommodation. So this hill, it's, it's uh, very facultative for only for wine tourists. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, all the, the wineries or the cellar are open-minded to, to make tastings. And of course, you can find uh, Shomlu wine shop, Kreinbach Hereste, Tornai, Chordas, a few bigger company. They are open in a full year every day. So if you don't have enough Shomlu wine, you can drive to, yeah. to the hill and you, you can buy. Um, for me, it's the same. So I usually have every week some group of visitors. Mm -hmm is more than enough for me because we work uh, in the vineyards mm -hmm. so we don't have time and, and energy to make uh, every day yeah. open or mm -hmm. tastings and uh, our biggest part of uh, the sellings is for sale it happens I sell a lot of wine to foreign countries so it means almost 70% it's for export. Okay. And to which countries? Because maybe some listeners listen to from the US and they can run to the store. So, so yeah, uh, my one of the biggest uh, partner is in New York, Brooklyn, Palin Kerry. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a very good cooperation with an Austrian winemaker, Roan Bellig Moritz, mm -hmm. who is the, mm -hmm. the Pope of the Blau Frankish. Okay. And he has a uh, Hidden Treasures under the name Hidden Treasures of Pannonia, cooperation with Tokai producer, Shomro producer, it's me, mm -hmm. and from uh, Balaton with the Villa Tomani. And he sell more than 20 countries this uh, Hidden Treasure project. And do they usually look for UFARC or do they look for this terroir? What is the, the main selling point? Uh -huh. more, more the terroir. They look for uh, good quality mineral volcanic wines and we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's um, not an A to A or B question, but how would you maybe distinguish your terroir from another volcanic terroir? Because you talked about the soil and that you have uh, different <laughs> exposures. Yeah, uh, my opinion, Shomlo is the, the most volcanic <laughs> because 
uh, this puzzle what we have here is the the softest you can find a lot of small big uh, pieces mm -hmm. in the vineyard sand and that's the oldest volcano but a join then hedge Chobans, they are younger, a few million years. That's the perfect last work. Shomlo, the most volcanic of all. <laughs> Thank you very much for, <laughs> for welcoming the beautiful vines. And I uh, wish you all the best for the future with your selections and also with your organic. Thank you for coming and, and, and uh, making this interview. I hope it will help for a lot of customers to, to taste Shomlo wines. Me too. I, <laughs> I will try my best and I will put all the, the contacts below in the description so maybe next day he will find <laughs> some listeners here at this beautiful table under the rock so thank you very much. So how did you like this conversation with Tomasz? I like his wines very much, I like his approach very much, how he has a love for the land he cultivates. And if you would like to hear more ghost stories from this region, from the Balaton Uplands, please follow us on the Instagram and the Wine Ghosts and please follow the Wine Ghosts podcast because I've been recording some very interesting and insightful interviews with winemakers, also with wine merchants from the area. And I would like you to look for these wines, look for this terroir, come here and feel this region because it's a very unique one and it's a lot to give. Thank you for listening. And I wish you all the best and 